Hello there, my name is Moose Man, and today I'm here to inform you of whether you should play, wait or avoid the platformer creation game Super Mario Maker. As always, we'll be looking at gameplay, aesthetics, value, and future potential before making a final verdict on the release version of Super Mario Maker. Super Mario Maker is the latest 2D platformer in the Mario series, but with a twist. Instead of being a simple sequel to the new Super Mario Bros. U, Super Mario Maker focuses on letting players create their own levels using items and enemies from across the most popular of the earlier 2D generation platformers, including the original Super Mario Bros., Super Mario World, Super Mario 3, and the new Super Mario Bros. U. You can share and play these levels instantly using Nintendo's online service that provides you with a massive library of levels to play straight from other players of the game. Having worked with game design engines and game makers in the past, I was curious to see how Nintendo would create a system with the depth of a traditional professional game engine while still making it easy for gamers to understand and build levels without a massive amount of tutorials. And I'm happy to say that Nintendo has done an amazing job of creating an easily accessible but still content rich level designing tool. Everything is based on a pictorial representation without any form of text or numerical editing. Instead, you go through the menu showing what objects are available and simply drag and drop the pieces where you want them. If you want to edit the properties of an object, such as making it bigger or giving it the ability to shoot fire, you can drag a mushroom or fire flower respectively on top of the enemy of your choice. While it does take some time to figure out exactly what you can put where, once you get the hang of it, levels can be designed at a fervent pace. In addition to placing objects manually, the game includes a number of tools that allow for quicker construction. Firstly, there's the ability to copy and paste, which is vital to placing down multiple copies of the same enemy, especially if you have modified them with special attributes. Combined with the second tool, the multi-grab tool, which allows you to grab and move multiple objects, you can copy and paste entire sections of levels, allowing you to quickly replicate traps or entire rooms if you so desire. The final special tool is the ability to undo any previous action, which is extremely useful especially when editing or moving entire sections of your level. Most of the actual placing of objects in Super Mario Maker works well, but I do have to criticize the way that you switch between different forms of the same object. Some enemies or items have multiple forms, and to switch between them you have to shake the item rapidly until it changes. This is a bit annoying at times, but what makes the problem worse is the fact that there is no indication as to what objects can be transformed in this way. If you are unfamiliar with all the objects in the Mario universe, you may end up shaking things hoping for a different version on items that have no other forms. When you initially start up Super Mario Maker, you will only have a limited number of items at your disposal. There are two ways to unlock more items, by playing the game for at least 5 minutes each day for 9 days, or by playing for an extended period of time, which will result in new items arriving early. Prior to the first patch, the only way to unlock items was to wait these 9 days, which it can be duped using the Wii U's internal clock, but the addition of unlocking items based on playtime has changed my opinion of this system radically. Keeping with the theme of creating a highly accessible editor, having a huge number of tools right at the start could be overwhelming for those with absolutely no game design experience. This system ensures that players get the feel for the tools they have at their disposal and then gradually eases them into some of the more advanced features. But most importantly, Mario Maker allows both people who have a lot of time to play the game and those who don't to unlock things at their own pace. My biggest criticism of Super Mario Maker is that even in the older styles, you are limited to the Super Mario Bros. U way of obtaining power-ups. The difference between Super Mario Bros. U and the older titles is that in Super Mario Bros. U, a block with a mushroom always has a mushroom, a block with a fire flower always contained a fire flower, and so on. In the original games, if you had a mushroom power-up, then the next mushroom block you hit would have a fire flower, or whatever item was set for that level. In those games, receiving an advanced power-up was a reward, not a guarantee. And excluding the ability to set up a scaling power-up in an item box is definitely a letdown. While this may seem like nitpicking, this is a significant problem when attempting to create levels that are designed to be as close as possible to the original games. Another building-related criticism that I have is the inability to build vertical levels. When you create a level in Super Mario Maker, you will be able to designate how long the level is horizontally, 
but vertically the level is set to a static height. While you may be able to use pipes to emulate the feel of a vertical tower, a true vertical tower style level is impossible. Sharing and playing user-created levels is a prime example of how Nintendo has made ease of use its top priority in Super Mario Maker. After you have finished creating your level, you can hit the upload button and share your level with the world. However, as a great measure to control unbeatable levels, you yourself will have to finish the level from start to finish before you can finish uploading it. This addresses one of the key concerns I had when I initially heard about the ability to share levels online, which is that trolls or overzealous designers would flood the online servers with a huge number of impossible levels. While there are still some levels that creators use hidden blocks to essentially cheat their way through the level, the curation system eventually filters out levels players don't like or that nobody can beat. Uploading good levels also benefits the creator by giving them medals that act as reputation. The other benefit to uploading good levels is that when you start the game you are limited to only uploading 10 levels, but after your levels get starred by other players, the number of levels that you can upload will increase. This simultaneously regulates the number of levels on the service while enabling good designers to upload more, which should result in more good levels than bad levels over the lifespan of the game. To play a level made by another player, you have a few options depending on what type of experience you are looking for. Firstly, you can go online to the level browser and search for levels based on what they look like, or how highly they are rated. You can search by featured levels, the amount of star ranking, new levels, or by entering a unique code to get the specific level that you want. I want to praise this system due to the speed at which you can get into the game and play these levels. You can choose to simply press play and in seconds you will be playing the level with nearly zero downtime. You can also choose to download the level to edit yourself or to use the editor to figure out if there are any tricks to being the level that you may have missed. The second way you can play levels is through the 100 Mario Challenge. Depending on the difficulty that you choose, you will be given 8 to 16 random levels from the online service and you must complete them all within 100 lives. You can quickly skip any level you can't beat or that you don't want to play, allowing you to play a large number of levels quickly, enabling you to expand your library without having to go through the level browser. The online service is definitely the most crucial and well-executed part of Super Mario Maker. Nintendo in the past has had a relatively poor online service when compared to other online gaming services, but Super Mario Maker proves that Nintendo is not only capable of creating a great online system, but also a system that in some ways even surpasses the sharing services of other online games. Getting into levels is instant, easy, and requires only one to two menu clicks max to move from the editor to level and back again. The online doesn't feel separated from the rest of the game, but rather it is integrated so tightly that you will barely even notice the difference between online features and offline features. Even Miiverse, a service that which I have never used in the past, is integrated extremely well by allowing players to pause any level and comment for other players to read while they are playing through the level to help them through tougher sections. These comments can be turned off of course, but being able to see where people had trouble on levels is a great way to socialize and improve your level design simultaneously. For the first time, I finally feel like Nintendo is utilizing the Wii U's internet capability to its full potential, and the result is borderline revolutionary. Amiibos do have some limited functionality in the game, but they are almost entirely related to costumes. Tapping an Amiibo in the original Super Mario Bros. style will allow you to choose which costume comes out of the new random mushroom item when designing levels. If you don't have an amiibo or don't specify which costume you want, a random costume will be given to the player upon playing the level. You can actually unlock all the random costumes by playing through the 100 Mario Challenge, however only amiibo owners will be able to specify the specific costumes in their levels. There is one amiibo that has a bit more functionality than the others, and that is the 8-bit classic 30th anniversary amiibo. This amiibo allows you to place a Mega Shroom which allows Mario to break through certain blocks in addition to changing the look of all the enemy sprites on screen. While I'm not a fan of locking content behind amiibos, besides the 8-bit Mario amiibo, the functionality you gain from having amiibos is entirely cosmetic. It's extremely unfortunate that Nintendo decided to lock a useful item behind the 8-bit Mario amiibo, but hopefully in the future there will be a way to unlock this item without the amiibo, especially considering how rare the 8-bit classic amiibo is looking to be. 
The aesthetics in Super Mario Maker levels are pretty self-explanatory. Each of the previous styles has the aesthetics of its original version. The only difference between the old and new versions aesthetically is that the sprites of enemies that were not introduced until later games are put in as completely new sprites attempting to maintain the original style. There is one small aesthetic based detail that I would like to praise the game on, and that's the inclusion of the virtual hand on the main TV screen. Nothing I've shown in today's video has been from the gamepad, and that's because the gamepad and TV screen are identical outside of this virtual hand. This allows everybody in the room or on stream to make suggestions and easily identify if the player with the gamepad is editing the right area. Considering that the game is single player only, it's nice to see Nintendo continue to consider other people being in the room during the level creation process even if they don't have a controller. Super Mario Maker is priced at a standard $60 launch price. But is what is essentially a tool worth the price of a full Mario title? Content wise, Absolutely. There are already more courses available on the online service to keep anyone playing Mario for the rest of their life. But the main thing that is missing when Super Mario Maker is compared to traditional Mario titles is a story mode. While the actual story in Mario games is never anything incredibly deep, I still enjoyed playing through the path of levels designed around the specific theme or world. With Mario Maker, unless you build a similar set on your own, you'll be playing a disjointed set of levels that span across multiple games if you are playing the 100 Mario Challenge which has replaced the traditional story mode. That being said, the lack of story mode is really the only reason that the value of the game would be diminished. For $60 you are still definitely getting your money's worth if you enjoy playing a vast number of Mario levels even if you don't plan on designing them. Them. One thing that is important to note with Super Mario Maker is that all these great sharing features require the internet to use. Not having access to an internet connection will severely limit the amount of content available since the game only has around 60 locally included levels in the 10 Mario Challenge, which is a shorter preset version of the 100 Mario Challenge. If you have at least some internet connection you will be able to download levels for offline play but I highly recommend considering how often you will have access to the internet with your Wii U before purchasing this game. The editor alone in my opinion isn't worth the $60 price tag. It's the addition of the online services and essentially endless content that gives the game enough content to warrant a full AAA price tag. But what about in comparison to emulators that have had countless numbers of ROM hacks created that do essentially the same thing as Mario Maker levels, if not more? While there are benefits to emulators, mainly the lack of restrictions in terms of level possibilities and the sometimes custom story mode, the ease of use in terms of obtaining and creating Mario Maker levels provides a convenience that ROM hacks could never provide. The massive size of the Mario Maker community has already resulted in the surpassing number of ROM hacks available in only a few days. In addition to the amount of content, the community tools and curation allow you to see what levels are popular in addition to gauging the difficulty of the levels based on the percent of people who have cleared that level. ROM hacks for the most part are designed to be above and beyond what any average Mario player would be expected to be capable of, and the only way to find out which ROM hacks are too difficult or not is to download them in hopes that they will fit your skill level. While ROM hacks will always be a still cool way to experience truly custom Mario levels, for the average user Super Mario Maker will end up being the better overall experience. Nintendo has done quite a good job of packing in every aspect of 2D Mario games that they could into Super Mario Maker, so my request for additional content in the future will be rather brief. While I would love to see other games such as Yoshi's Island or Super Mario 2 added to the game, it's reasonable to assume that these games will not be added simply because they have very unique mechanics and enemies that are not interchangeable with the Mario Maker games that were chosen. Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 3, Super Mario World, and New Super Mario Bros U all have the same basic enemies and mechanics, making it easy to create a system that encompasses them all into a single editing program. Adding other games beyond these four is probably a pipe dream that would ruin the interchangeability but it doesn't mean I wouldn't kill for a Yoshi Island editor at some point. Super Mario Maker isn't just a developer tool ported for the Wii U. It's a fluid, fast, easy to use system that allows for instant creation and sharing of levels with absolutely no prior knowledge into game design. While there are limitations to the game in comparison to a traditional game engine or a ROM hack, there are plenty of new modifications that can be made to enemies and objects to keep those looking for a more advanced stage builder quite satisfied, 
in addition to making the game the most accessible game development style software to date. Whether you're looking to build levels using the editor or just want to play levels that people have created, Super Mario Maker will satisfy your 2D Mario based urges for the next few years with its great online sharing system. While it's not going to convert anybody who doesn't like Mario games, for those that do, I recommend that you play Super Mario Maker. Yes, the game has some nuances that I wish Nintendo had taken into account regarding the older style games, but beyond that, I don't have too many reasons to complain about Super Mario Maker. Thank you for watching my play, wait or avoid review of Super Mario Maker. If you would like to buy the game, check out the Nintendo eShop or your closest games realtor. And if you would like to see more of my content, subscribe and check out my channel where I do reviews, news, and other gaming commentary such as my review of Circa Infinity, a puzzle platformer that focuses on circular stages instead of traditional linear levels, or my review of Energy Hook, a parkour-based game that is a spiritual successor to Spider-Man 2.